uh, we're going to start to talk about today. So today, the focus is financial services. We're going to hear from um, speakers from major banks as well as, uh, as fintechs and the people looking to promote the, uh, the, the fintech environment. Uh, later on, we'll hear from AFIN, the ASEAN Financial Innovation Network, but I'm very pleased to start today with a, a keynote from uh, Alan Lim. He's the, um, the head of the FinTech Infrastructure Office at Monetary Authority of Singapore, or MAS. And uh, please, uh, please welcome Alan. All right, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks everyone. Thanks, Alan. Uh, we, we'll just check that we can see your screen. Okay, great. Over to you. All right, thank you. So, uh, firstly, uh, good morning to everyone, and uh, thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you. So, I'm really delighted to be here to speak with you about the work that we do uh, at MES to uh, build up a smart financial center. So, as John mentioned, um, I head up the FinTech Infrastructure Office, which is really responsible for the regulatory policies as well as strategies for enabling a safe and efficient um, digital infrastructure supporting the financial services sector. So for this session, I'm going to be talking about some of the key initiatives that we've embarked on and also some perspective of where we are as an industry. So when we talk about digital infrastructure um, and it being a fundamental uh, building block for the digital economy, these are some of the things that come to mind, right? So uh, first, you know, the idea of who we are on the internet or the identity that we carry. So I think that's embodied in Singapore's case with the National Digital Identity Program, which um, our colleagues from GovTech has covered extensively. So Kendrick has kind of mentioned and introduced the idea of SingPass uh, being the uh, National Digital Identity uh, Initiative, which covers a range of different uh, programs, uh, ranging from the, the fact that we do not need to remember our pass password as we log on to uh, some of the to access basically the government services. So I think that uh, remains a very key and fundamental part of our digital economy. The other building block, if I look at it, as far as the digital infrastructure is concerned, that would involve the movement of money, right? So that would be uh, uh, initiatives such as PayNow, things like FAST, for example, that facilitates the movement of money uh, between individuals, but also between uh, businesses as well. The other piece, um, which is pretty fundamental, is around data as well. So how do we share data and leverage trusted data to make uh, better decisions? Um, so my info, uh, again, uh, Kendrick did cover that yesterday as part of his uh, session, uh, really helps to uh, facilitate the customer onboarding process. Um, the other example on data sharing, uh, Y from Singapore Customs did mention the work that uh, her colleagues and her have been uh, working on to facilitate um, and provide information to actually reduce fraud um, uh, through trusted data that's shared by traders. So I think there are different building blocks that are being built up and this serves to enable a smarter financial center. So other than these uh, aspects, there are also different technology components uh, ranging from the runtime platforms that are enabled through the cloud uh, initiatives that a lot of uh, uh, fintechs as well as uh, financial institutions, FIs, have embarked on to leverage cloud as a technology to drive cost efficiency and savings. Uh, so we continue to see that, that focus. So among the other technology elements and also the design uh, around uh, new architecture, I think one of the key aspects is, is still going to be around uh, the work that this community is, is working on around APIs. It's fundamental to support and enable uh, this idea of a open and inclusive uh, society. So really excited um, to, to share with you some of the initiatives that um, we've worked on together, but also learn uh, over the course of the day, we've heard uh, yesterday, but over the course of the day, uh, you know, some of the innovations that are coming up and developed by this uh, community. So as far as uh, Singapore's journey towards uh, open APIs, um, and specifically from a financial services perspective, I think one of the key signature events or signature moments is when we've launched um, together in the industry between MES as well as the Association of Banks in Singapore. Um, a couple of years ago, Finance as a Service API playbook. 
So within the API playbook itself, it contains information such as what is an API um, and uh, what are the use cases the APIs could be employed for uh, to uh, guidance as far as the information technology standards as well as governance model. Um, we've seen uh, evolve from there. Um, the the other uh, financial uh, for the the other signature moment that we've uh, I would I would call out is uh, the establishment of a financial industry API register. So that's a continuous work in progress. It's available on the MAS uh, site. It contains the list of APIs that the financial institutions have made available. Um, it gives you some statistics in terms of uh, the types of APIs. So we do track the APIs. And we track that across um, uh, the different categories, ranging from whether it's a product-related API, it supports sales and marketing activity, servicing, or transactional APIs. So uh, if you go into the uh, MES Financial Industry API Register, it does give you a perspective of what are those APIs. And uh, if you're kind of curious uh, how many APIs there are, so these are some of the numbers that uh, you could look at if you go to the API register page. Um, again, these are numbers that the FIs have reported, uh, you know, registered with us and launched. So we started off with 238 uh, APIs in 2017. Uh, you can see that growth over the years. It's, you know, over a, a thousand in 2020 APIs that are made available uh, by the FIs. Um, again, I'm, I'm, sure that the number of APIs that this community has developed may not be fully represented over here. So I'm actually, uh, since I'm here at the API Days event, I'd like to uh, make a request perhaps for the audience over here. If you are aware of uh, you know, an API that's made available by financial institutions that's uh, maybe not represented over here, please uh, visit us at the QR code over here and uh, you know, register those APIs. And if you are a developer trying to understand what APIs are available by financial institutions, please take a look at this as well. Okay, so we spoke about uh, the journey that we've been on. And uh, so this is a point where you know, we take a, 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 probably a stop and kind of reflect on, on where we are and where we're going. So I think the conversation has shifted away from what is an API, right? I think it's, it's, it's shifted and matured in the sense that I think there's a lot of focus around uh, the customer journey and experience. In fact, some of the sessions yesterday did touch upon how do we improve customer engagement. So I think uh, there's a greater sensitivity and, and a focus on that aspect to make banking invisible. Um, I think there are new opportunities that have risen because of uh, the growing uh, uh, move, movement or the opportunities created through embedded finance. Uh, with that, what we see is a unique combination between traditional financial services provider as well as new entrants from a different industry. So having those uh, parties combined, I think we see a lot of new innovations and products that are coming out of this space. Uh, one thing that we probably need to look at as industry is just trying to understand and, and better, under, better define some of these business models and, and what it looks like. For example, in such arrangement with new distribution channels, who really owns the customer and where does the liability of one party start or stop? Or when does the other party's liability and responsibility uh, begin? So I think those are the things that we really need to look at as well. Um, the quality of APIs and expectations as customers, as developers, I think that's gone up over the years. Um, I, I think it's not good enough to just say, I have an API. I think there is an expectation that those APIs need to be functional. So I think there's a heightened expectation for uh, the quality of those APIs to go up. And, and I think that in order to differentiate um, one API from another, providers need to look at how they improve and make their APIs more available and, and, and resilient to shorten the process that a developer might, might require to actually onboard to the platform. I think that's critical. On the security side of things as well, um, we probably need to look at how uh, APIs are uh, made available to third parties coming in. We've actually updated from an MS perspective, the MES TRM as well, to look at the quality, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the measures that are put in place as APIs are being exposed to third party. 
some of the additional safeguards and controls that should be put in place to strengthen that as well. So the fourth aspect I want to call out is this aspect of industry collaboration. Um, in some of the earlier uh, kind of uh, API journey, the experience is about exposing the financial institutions or the, the banks uh, or, or the other providers in the financial services sector uh, capabilities out to the public. But I think, uh, I, 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 but I think that it, it, it will probably evolve in a different way or an extended way. In the embedded finance way, we see that collaboration uh, between the different parts of the ecosystem, some of which is in a bilateral basis. But I think some of these uh, issues that we face as an industry, as individuals, as businesses looking to leverage and tap on API, I think it requires that public-private collaboration across the different uh, parts of the industry to, look, to understand where the friction may exist in existing infrastructure and in existing um, uh, you know, platforms and, and work together to reduce and remove those friction and figure out what's the right governance model that it's open um, but fair so that whoever joins and share the APIs uh, do so in a way that's collaborative but also bear in mind the different responsibilities and also the different uh, considerations within some of these uh, networks and to do that in a way that takes into consideration the multilateral interests as well. Okay, so I'm going to go through the next couple of slides, just a couple of examples of some of the journeys that we've been on, uh, or some of the user journeys that we are focusing on to reduce some of the friction that I mentioned earlier. So the first one I'm going to touch upon is how do we enable this whole journey about better financial planning for you? So we did touch upon this yesterday, or my colleagues did touch upon this yesterday, which is this initiative called SG Findex. The idea is... Um, uh, the problem statement is how do I enable an individual who wants to gather information across the different um, uh, financial institutions that they have a relationship with to gather information about uh, my overall financial health. So today without or, or previously without SG Findex, you would have to probably go to individual financial institutions to pull that information manually. Um, and the same, same way you would have to go to um, government agencies just to understand, uh, you know, what's your uh, existing CPF account, uh, your housing situation and tax information as well. And pull that manually probably uh, over a few, uh, few nights, maybe just to pull it into a spreadsheet. But what we're trying to solve over here is to, de to develop an infrastructure that allows this seamless integration between the different parties and pull those information in a, a more holistic and seamless way for you as an individual. So SG Findex was developed by the public sector um, in collaboration with ABS and seven participating banks in the first phase to allow that central infrastructure to be stood up um, to provide the opportunity for you as an individual um, to use and pick the financial planning application uh, from any of the participating banks to be able to access a consolidated view of the information across all the banks that you have a relationship with. You could also use My Money Sense, which is an initiative by uh, Ministry of Manpower, um, to look at how uh, that their overall financial health is. So with that, we think that will give a more uh, holistic view and, and probably a, a more uh, frictionless process for the individuals as well. And from a institution's perspective as a data provider, rather than having to worry about individual bilateral connections and figuring out the setup between each of the parties, this is a more seamless way with the common infrastructure, with standard APIs as well as standard data models. We think that would be a much straightforward process. Um, there's also the aspects around um, how we go about sharing the data. So I think there's uh, the questions raised yesterday, I think, um, about whether data is shared the, 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 in S3 Findex itself. So S3 Findex does not store the customer data. Data is encrypted end-to-end. -end. It's passed through S3 Findex, um, but it's not stored within S3 Findex. The other aspect to po probably point out as well um, is to, as part of the governance process, there is a, a sensitivity about, you know, uh, that whoever comes aboard S3 Findex need to uh, be assessed or uh, be be able to add value to the rest of the parties that are providing data as well because we want it to be a, a fair and equitable uh, scenario where somebody is consuming data from this platform it's also uh, able to contribute um, 
information or, or, or data into that platform as well. So those are some of the factors that needs to be kind of considered. We're not stopping with banks. We're looking at um, SGX, CDP data next, and also subsequently with insurance, uh, with insurers as well. So the, if you want to check it out, check out this uh, uh, and get start and get started and figure out what's SGF index. Take a look at the QR code that's uh, listed over here. Okay, we we, we spoke about um, financial planning. Next, the other journey is about enabling safe, simple, and speedy payment for us uh, as uh, uh, as consumers. Right, so um, fast, as some of you may know, uh, enables 24 by 7 uh, instant payment, uh, retail payments today. Um, and uh, PayNow allows us to do so, to transfer money to our friends and family uh, just by you know, knowing their phone number and, and sending that uh, to them. And uh, what uh, we have uh, introduced or what the Direct Fast group has introduced more recently uh, with the launch of the API Payments Gateway is to enable uh, non-banks, financial institutions, direct access to the banking system's retail payment infrastructure, right? So previously, if you didn't have a credit card or a debit card and you wanted to top up your e-wallet, it's going to be uh, challenging. So with this new uh, program, um, with the launch of the a API Payments Gateway, it really achieves and uh, enables uh, payments interoperability between the banks as well as the non-FIs over here, right? So um, users of a non-FIs e-wallet will be able to transfer money to other banks as well as uh, other e-wallet providers as well. So that's something that uh, we're, we're looking to enable um, as well. So with this, um, it's, uh, it, it gives a, 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 a wider access to a wider set of players. And uh, we think that will create more innovation, more products in the industry. And uh, really excited to see what's, uh, what, what innovation comes out from here. So we spoke about individuals. We spoke about um, uh, the opportunities, uh, the friction that exists, and, and how we go about solving some of these problems. What about SMEs? So I think that's also an area that we are focusing on. How do we create the opportunities for SMEs to expand and, and go, uh, uh, go beyond uh, the domestic uh, market. So one of the initiatives that we've started is called Business Sense Borders. It started off as a MES and IMDA-led initiative to support the digitalizations of SMEs. So how this works is that it's, it's really envisioned to be a, a network of um, SMEs, uh, trade networks, essentially. So an SME, uh, who is looking to trade would be able to connect to BSB as a, a, a platform or an initiative and be able to connect and trade with uh, a supplier uh, sitting within a different SME platform in an entirely different country. So what BSB does is to connect these different SME platforms together so that uh, individual SMEs do not have to worry about onboarding to multiple different uh, SME platforms. There's also AI built into the platform that allows you to uh, or allow SME to be matched uh, to the businesses based on the criteria that uh, uh, matches their needs. And also there's a bunch of other different services ranging from insurance, logistics, and financing that could be made available through the platform. BSB is commercialized as a separate legal entity called Proxterra. And uh, if you want to know more about Proxterra, please visit this uh, uh, link over here. And, and, and learn about the Proxterra Global Open API that's, ma that's making um, this connectivity between SME marketplace uh, uh, possible. So the next uh, journey I want to talk about is around innovators. How do we enable and, uh, innovators to discover and co-create um, solutions? So John did introduce um, uh, the ASEAN Financial Innovation Network. Um, so that's an uh, initiative that uh, was started in, uh, by MES as well as a few other partners. And um, APIX or API Exchange is uh, one of the uh, initiatives coming out of AFIN. So it serves as a global marketplace and sandbox for collaboration. The simple idea is that um, it, it creates a place whereby uh, a FinTech with a, great, uh, with a great solution, an FI with a great uh, problem statement trying to solve that problem, this is a place that they come together and meet. 
Again, uh, it could be two fintechs trying to discover each other and, and work together. So there are multiple different scenarios, but uh, we want to create through this Apex platform a place for discovery of solutions, co-creation, uh, and, and testing some of these solutions with the uh, sandbox that's available through this platform. So since its launch, it has 70 plus financial institutions, 400 plus fintechs across 30 countries. And uh, I'm not going to go into details about this. Uh, we have our colleagues from AFIN coming up later today, and we'll be sharing more details about this. Okay, so we've, uh, we've covered a couple of different user journeys. We went through um, some of the building blocks. So what's the way forward? So I think we continue to be focused around inclusivity, making sure finance is open and accessible to all. I think there's a, a rising push towards a digital first um, uh, design, but I think the safeguards need to be put in place as well to make sure that as consumers, we're protected. Um, Efficiency and productivity continue to be uh, important, but I think there's going to be more a stronger focus around resiliency and sustainability. And um, I think that there is a, uh, a, a, a different sets of uh, areas that we need to look at and, and work together. We have spoke about the digital infrastructure piece. Uh, I, I gave some examples of what they may look like and uh, how that could be uh, tapped into. Uh, for um, uh, to be used to develop and deliver the platforms such as S3 Findex, which taps on um, SyncPass as, as one of the key components over there. Um, and uh, there is also the aspect around conducive regulations. So on that front, um, that is something that uh, we'll need to continue to watch and be mindful of. How, how do we make sure that regulation uh, and innovation comes together uh, so that it, the environment continues to be conducive for innovation, but the necessary safeguards are there to make sure that we're protected. So that could mean uh, uh, updating the regulation, that could mean uh, uh, creating an avenue or sandboxes for some of these experimentations to happen in a safe, uh, uh, conducive manner. There needs to be a continued partnership, I think, with the e ecosystem, uh, with had the opportunity to run a couple of different experiments. For example, Project Ubin brought together uh, 40 uh, institu institutions, tech companies together to explore the uh, application of uh, DLT technology um, for payments and settlement. So that's uh, there will continue to be uh, opportunities for us to do that. On the talent side, I think that's an area that we need to uh, look at as well as how we kind of improve the overall uh, uh, skills as, as an industry. So I think these are the broad areas that we will look at uh, and we'll continue to look at. So um, with that, I would like to end my presentation and, uh, and, and end it off by thanking all of you uh, for being part of this ecosystem. And I, I, I wish you all the best, wish you a, a great uh, rest, of the, rest of the day. Uh, enjoy uh, API Days uh, 2021 in Singapore. Thank you. Um, Thanks very much, Alan. Um, I'd like to pick up on a, a couple of things that you, you said, because as a uh, as the financial regulator, uh, MAS obviously has the uh, responsibility to keep uh, the financial system safe. It's probably the foundational element of, of what you do. But um, and, and you mentioned a, a few things like the um, the TRM, which is uh, for people outside Singapore, the, the technology risk management guidelines. That, uh, that MAS uh, publishes and, and financial institutions and, and fintechs yeah. uh, need, need to comply with. Um, but um, but I, I think you're, you're, going, you're going beyond just being safe because you want to make sure that uh, Singapore is a place where companies can, can grow and grow um, beyond uh, Singapore as, as well. So um, the, the partnerships, you mentioned a couple of them, but uh, for... For fintechs, for example, um, the the partnership with the Singapore Fintech Association to develop the um, uh, fintech uh, compliance readiness framework uh, and how that flows through to um, being, uh, being being authorised to uh, to conduct um, uh, financial uh, businesses in, uh, in in Singapore, uh, and also that that's sort of a stepping stone onto also the the Apex platform. Uh, that, uh, that you mentioned, but I, but I think um, so. Where where are the things that you 
Um, but w where are the things that you you see those those partnerships going and and growing? Yep. So thanks, thanks, John. So I think that um, for a a truly vibrant ecosystem uh, where fintech and innovation really thrives, I think there needs to be the infrastructure piece, which we we spend a lot of time on today. Uh, there's also the ecosystem piece, which you kind of alluded to, uh, whether it's partnership with different associations, uh, trade bodies, uh, uh, industry industry groups, um, and uh, you know, looking also not just the network within Singapore, I think platforms like these, like API Days and others, gives us uh, uh, an avenue for us to, to be connected, I think, globally in different ecosystems as well. So I think that's continue to be a focus for us, uh, build bridges, connectivity across different um, jurisdictions, build that connectivity at the individual and, and uh, on a, a personal basis through the industry connections. Uh, I think that continues to be a, a, a focus uh, and, and, and we do have uh, 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 different avenues and platforms of, uh, for that. And I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to be here as well, right? For, for us to talk about this. Yeah, and uh, you, we, we talked about the, the framework in term of, terms of governance, but you've also yep. put, uh, assembled the, the building blocks. So. Uh, fast, uh, fast and secure transfers uh, for, for real-time payments was around um, around about 2012, I think that that uh, that, that went live, and that's yep. a sort of a, a foundation for um, for the Pay Now um, initiative, and now you're extending that to to, to wallets. Um, the um, the business sans border borders. Um, yep. That's um, that's an interesting. Um, initiative also to, to go on. Um, we have a couple of questions in the chat though that I'd like to, to refer to. So uh, oh. finance as a service. So when it comes to the central endpoint for different financial channels uh, within the country, um, is, it, is it adding um, a facade or is it, um, or is it part of the, the, the infrastructure itself? So um, I guess the different models that you can use are very decentralized or very centralized sort of um, aspect. Okay, so I'm assuming the uh, we're referring to the SG Findex. Um, I, I think SG Findex is a, a classic example because okay. if you had built it differently, you could have made it a heavily centralized model. But I think you've you put some things yeah. in the center, and the rest is decentralized. Yeah, that's right. So so thanks thanks John. So I think there are different models. And uh, I think it depends on the the use case. I think it depends on the players that are involved as well, uh, the, the activities that's involved. So um, for SG Findex, uh, the alternative would be to, there are various alternatives, right? Ranging from how the data is stored and deployed to uh, who does the identity, uh, the identity verification, for example, how consent is captured. So I think there are different options as far as how uh, uh, the data resides, but also where are the control points. Um, there, there could be an option for bilateral connections and setup to be made possible uh, for, for the individuals, data providers, and data consumers. But if you kind of think about it, if, if you really want to uh, have a holistic view of the financial position, uh, but if you are in a position where we kind of uh, have individual providers negotiate and figure out what those connections are. I think that's going to be a very onerous process. Um, and there's also that concern that, that some institutions may be left out through the process. So I think that's where that kind of uh, coming together between the private and public uh, institutions coming together and, and figuring out what's the right governance model. I think that's very important uh, and tapping into the core infrastructure components to, mm -hmm. to make that happen. Um, I think I think that's something that we'll need to be sensitive about uh, because there are there are definitely different technology options to enable that. But I think that it needs to be coupled with how do we enable a inclusive uh, but also a fair uh, uh, kind of a, a model where it's fair not just for um, the consumers but also existing providers. I think we need to also figure out a way that's enable a system and infrastructure that's sustainable for 
uh, the parties involved. So I think mm -hmm. those are the yeah. things that are uh, yeah. back okay. up. Yeah. Great. So last question, which I think um, uh, goes to that access uh, point. So yes. the, um, the the process for gaining access to the APIs for SGF Index. So before SGF Index, um, uh, developers would have to go onto the uh, developer portals of the, the different banks, uh, register an account, uh, try out the apps, and then go through each bank's uh, governance process, uh, onboarding process to, to onboard as a as a partner. What do, what do they need to do for for SG Findex? Is there a process for that? Yeah, so for SG Findex, you can access the the data through the fin participating financial planning applications. Um, it's not um, uh, you know, open and accessible to uh, any developer today. And the reason for that is because uh, I was talking about the data sharing principle. So it's important that um, it's not just, I'm just taking everything I, I want from the system, uh, I'm consuming it, but also the question about what am I giving back? So there's that, that, that delicate balance of figuring out um, what where the principles of data sharing and uh, uh, figuring out uh, what, uh, the right kind of a partnership model exists. So, so on that front, um, if you want to access information, the way to do that today is through the financial planning applications of the participating institutions. Um, the APIs in general, um, which I mentioned earlier on with the MAS API register. So that's, that's available uh, on our uh, MAS uh, site. So if anyone wants to understand and learn more about the uh, different APIs that are made available by the different institutions, they could uh, look at those uh, links that are available there. For, for sharing that, um, uh, re really appreciate it. Um, yep. Thanks, thanks very and much, Alan. Thank you. And uh, if anyone else has any questions, our email is over here, uh, fintech underscore office at mes.gov.sg. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.